Welcome to the Nightly Rant. I'm Mike. And I'm Toria. This is the show where we talk about the awful things that have happened in our day, the awesome things that have happened in our day, and all the things in between. Thanks for listening, and we truly hope you enjoy. So I saw a meme on a hockey friend's wall today. Did you? Oh. It's about the youth hockey team in Canada that got to the, to the bus accident and people yeah. died. Yeah. Well, it was showing that for hockey fans as a way of showing tribute. They're putting their sticks They're putting outside. their sticks outside. I think it's cute. It's a nice... I like things like that. I think it's kind of nifty when people... It's a nice gesture without being like crazy over the top or lunacy or anything. And it's subtle because if someone hasn't heard it, they're not going to understand why all these hockey sticks are outside. They're going to understand that that means something. Right. They're just not going to know what it means. Now, just imagine right now, pretty much every porch in Canada has a hockey stick on it. Yes. Because I don't know anybody who doesn't have a hockey stick. My mom has a hockey stick. She uses it for walking in case there was a bear. But a visitor right. to your country is going to be like, okay, now I know these hockey sticks out on the porches mean something. I have no clue what it means. And they're going to ask somebody, what does it mean? And they're going to find out. Well, then I was... That's why I love stuff like that. I saw... Okay, so one of my Facebook friends that I used to work with... Okay. Um, apparently, she went to high... Or she was a high schooler when one of the kids who passed away was younger. Okay. She's like 26 and he would have been like 20. Mm-hmm. So she posts everything she sees. And then I have another friend who lives about an hour outside of Humboldt. So they're posting literally everything they see. Let's explore something. I didn't anticipate going here, but you made me think of something. Okay. You ever notice that in tragedies of any kind, a celebrity that dies, gets murdered, whatever, any kind of tragedy, Mm -hmm. school shooting, mass shooting, terrorist attack, There's always that person who isn't necessarily directly involved, but at some point in their life had a fairly close friendship with someone who was directly involved. And for whatever reason, that's the person that's like the most faithful about honoring that person. Not even the people that are family members will remember 15 years from now. But that person is going to remember in 15 years. And that person always exists. It's kind of a strange phenomenon. And they always exist. And it makes me wonder, like, what is it that makes them that loyal to someone who really, even at best, could just be described as a friend? Who knows? Well, I think what it says is real friendship is not something that's just expendable. It's real friendship. It means something to a person. Maybe. And that's why they can't just dismiss it. Because it means something to them. That makes sense. But you're right. Like, it's you're seeing a lot of it. And I think it's nice to see... In a sense... People say, oh, it's it's the sports that brings you together. For me, what draws me in is... The drive and courage that these kids had to have to be on that team in the first place. The drive meaning, you know, they got to work hard. Not just anybody makes it on a team. Well, and there was kids on that team. I mean, the farthest away I saw was Whittier. And and you have to have courage. In California. You have to have courage to go away from home. Now, Now, question. Did the entire team get wiped out? The entire team was on the bus. And all of their coaching staff, there was 29 people total, and 15 of them died, including the coaches. But were there any players left? Yes. Can you imagine... There's 14 people alive. Can you imagine what those people feel like? 
I've seen a lot of posts today specifically just imagining what that truck driver feels like. Yeah. Because there's no... They're still investigating, like, how the accident actually occurred. But he wasn't under the influence, wasn't texting and driving, he didn't fall asleep at the wheel. It, Their preliminary reports It just looks like a legit accident. He couldn't see them coming, went through a yield sign, and hit the bus. Mm. And that guy is going to need... Major Some therapy. Serious therapy. Yeah. And I feel really bad for him. I feel as bad for him as I do for anybody else that was involved. Yeah, you know, reminds me of not too long ago, well, eight years ago actually now, mm-hmm. there was, you know, the election had happened, it was, it was in November, the election had happened, and like, I think if I'm right, it was either the morning of the election or the following day in the morning, okay? But it was one of those days. It was really close. Mm-hmm. The girl was crossing from the park across to Kennedy over there by Walker and Crescent. And she and another girl, and they ran across the street in a pitch black dark. And a lady in a dark minivan hit the girl. Yep. Girl dead. Okay. Well, there were a lot of people that were in an uproar, but the police... First, the police said, well, okay, she wasn't texting and driving. She wasn't using a cell phone and driving. And, of course, back then, cell phone use was rampant and no one cared. Right. But they didn't do, she didn't have that. And um, I can't remember if they actually charged her with anything or not. But it was either that they didn't charge her with anything or they gave her, like, a really, really light, slap on the wrist for some stupid infraction. Because she didn't really do anything. Exactly. She didn't do anything on purpose. If anything, it would be a minus, minor reckless driving charge. Like, she didn't do anything on purpose. And that street itself causes conflict because on one side of the street, the speed limit's 40 miles an hour, and going the other direction, it's 45 miles an hour. Now, get this. The lady lived in Buena Park. Now, you know, you're smart enough to know that Buena Park over there starts at Valley View. Okay. Well, coming from that direction, this direction is Walker, then Valley View. So this lady comes from Buena Park to go to work every day. And she would go up and go to the 605 freeway, then cut across and get off over by where that other Costco is way over there. Okay. And she would do that every day. You think maybe she got used to the speed limit on one particular direction and didn't realize that it was different on both sides because, come on, let's face it, that's an odd scenario. Well, that same lady, she got beat up on and I kept saying to people, think about how she feels. She's not only a parent, she's a school teacher. Yeah. And she hit a child who wound up dead. Yeah. Think about that. You think she's suffering enough? I do. She doesn't need the shaming from the public. No. And that was always making me mad with people. That's not enough. That's not good enough. A child's life was taken. Yes. If you're a drunk fucking driver and you kill somebody, you deserve that ridicule. I agree. You should have thought about that before you put the alcohol in your system and then drove. Right. Like, And come on. In today's day and age with freaking Uber and Lyft and taxi cabs. Like what happened in Huntington Beach. Yes, that could have been avoided, and three killed three high schoolers. Could when they have were on been avoided, break. but even then, there's people that again back to our topic where there's tragedy, and there's those people. But then, how about the people that it doesn't matter how terrible the tragedy is, they don't give a crap. Why are we talking about? You guys already talked about this yesterday. Can we stop? Like what? It's only one of those things you're only supposed to talk about at once. Right. I mean, freaking, if their team won the Super Bowl, we'd be seeing memes about it for the next six months. Or more. But you're not supposed to say anything about people who get killed and how terrible it is. 
Right. And so it's... there's people on both sides. The people who, like, worship those dead people for some reason. And then the people who don't give two flying Fs about those dead people. Considering the nature of what happened, I have strangely not seen that ridicule you're talking about of the truck driver. And I was waiting for it. And I, I agree with you, I haven't. I haven't seen anything. I've seen posts that are saying, before you say something stupid, think to yourself what he's feeling. And that's I pretty think, much it. I think in large part, that's because he's already been cleared yeah. of the criminal elements of something like that. So right. as a human being, you say to yourself, all right, well, that's a legit accident. Like, he didn't, the only thing he's guilty of is not seeing them there. That's it. But for once, people are, for once, and I'm going to, People are being once, understanding of that aspect. People are focusing on that the whole thing was a giant tragedy instead of pointing all these fingers and trying to finally, blame somebody. And finally. It, it never happens. Finally. I'm I mean, shocked. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, you know, there's, there's places we could go with this that I'm not willing to go, but we can talk about that later. But, you know, <laughs> there's places I'm not willing to go with this. I'm not one to shy away from controversy, but no. <laughs> uh-uh. But, okay. So, you got that. You mm-hmm. got the two extremes. But what about the rest of us in the middle? You know, the people who just recognize that it's sad and then kind of move on? Well, and then, like, because... I think it's because, you know, having had a son who played ice hockey and was really the top of his game could have been one of those kind of kids that went and did something like that. Right. Or chose a different path on his own. Right. Okay. You, it hits home. So I find myself just every once in a while, the past day or so, just like stopping and thinking about, wow, somebody's son didn't come home, isn't coming home again. Yeah. Like, that's heavy. Like, think about, God forbid, that I saw Alyssa and Mitchell this morning, and then we saw, um, you know, that was it. I saw them this morning, and that was it. We didn't even go over there after that. Didn't need to. Mm-hmm. What if I say goodbye to them, and then something happened, awful, and one of them never comes back again? I can't fathom that. Like that. Right. It doesn't compute for me. It, it's like. I don't know. It doesn't even have a place in my head. I can't wrap my head around that. The strange thing is, I almost feel like one of the worst parts of something like this for the family of somebody that it happened to would be the news media hounding them over and over again for statements. I mean, mm-hmm. I saw I saw something on one of the Canadian news networks saying that the family of so-and-so wouldn't give them a statement. Why are you harassing them? Leave them alone. Exactly. It doesn't make, it doesn't make any sense to me. The people are so macabre about things like this. And the news media is just going to say they're just doing their job that some people want to know. Well, and a lot of people don't want to know. So right. why? I mean... That's like, a, why do we prioritize people's rights? Right. I don't grasp that. I don't feel like, I feel, I, okay, you know what I can be like when something happens that I really don't approve of? Mm-hmm. Um, um, yeah. Can, I can't no, even imagine. No fury. I can't even imagine if something awful happened and the news was like, yo, statement now, and I... Yeah. 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 I feel like I would unleash unleash all of my pent up rage in the ear of the person on the phone. Fire and brimstone. Yes. Yep. I think that's rude. I, I, I agree with you. I think it's it's worse than rude. Right. It's 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 plain and simple. It's disgusting. Right. right? Like to treat people that way. In any way, shape, or form. Let you know what? Because here's the point. People seem to grasp that the guy over in the um, worshiping realm is hurting. People seem to grasp that the guy over here just doesn't care. So you could tease him all you want. He's not going to care. Mm-hmm. They pick on the people in the middle. 
And they try to make it sound like we don't have a right to have feelings about the situation. But, you know, like I said, it hits close to home for me. I mean, even, hell, man, look at the soccer stuff. What if, what if he went away for a soccer tournament that none of us could afford to go to? Right. And something awful happened. Holy hell. Like, that could be the last time you see your kid. And, I mean, it's no different. I think about this when we leave one another wherever. If you go with someone else or I go out by myself or with someone else. What if we don't see each other again? What if something happens to one of us? That always crosses my mind. Always. Interesting. And I think... I think it's why my attitude has been more... Hmm. How to put it? More about living life. And just appreciating what you have in life at the moment and not worrying about the things you don't have because if you don't have them there's a reason why you don't have them who knows what that reason is but there's a reason why and it's just about you know are you being taken care of you know is life being taken care of by you if the answer is yes it's kind of like the guy said to matt when he was like you know i gave up Eight goals, and, we, and well, what was the score? Nine to eight. Oh, so you guys won, won nine to eight? He goes, yeah, and his coach goes, so Matt, don't be upset that you gave up nine goals. Be happy that you won. The other guy gave up our eight goals. Be happy that you won. The other guy gave up nine goals. He had a worse day. <laughs> so it's kind of the attitude is, as long as you're alive and you've got shelter over your head and your, your basic necessities are met, yeah, anything past that is gravy. Right. And I think I'm learning to just appreciate that fact that you don't have to be... It's nice to keep making more and more money when mm-hmm. you can, but if it takes longer for it to develop, then it takes longer for it to develop. That's what it is. As long as your needs are taken care of, you're good. So what? So then why do people pick on the middle I don't know like, why can't they just let us live how we live and not like multiple time harass us about it I don't think people can help themselves or even think or that people even think twice about it I think it's just second nature and I think you're right I think you're absolutely right I think people just react they think they see a pattern, boom, That's we're going to just throw you into that box right there. Right. <sighs> it's kind of like when people sort laundry just by whites, lights and darks. That's it. Or where does red go? Red's not dark. Wait a minute, it's not white either. <laughs> My mom go? sorts laundry into whites, pastels, brights, and darks. And in a sense, that makes more sense. Mm-hmm. Just when you think about it, it's kind of what I'm driving at. So... I don't know. I think this is a pretty bad tra- tragedy. I yeah, feel I really like... didn't like seeing it and having to look through a giant list of names for people I know. I am very happy, though, that it appears to be bringing entire countries together. Not just Canada, but like all these countries are coming together. Sweden. And, and I think it's because, again, I think back to what my point was. I think it's because people recognize the hard work that went in to get there. Well, in, Not everybody loves hockey, let's face it. There hasn't been a big tragedy that wasn't caused by like a terrorist attack or some or fucking some psycho lunatic. with a gun. And I it's it's awful, but tragedies bring people together. Yeah, when handled correctly. And I mean, I saw pictures on Facebook today of Justin Trudeau in the hospital visiting the kids who are still alive. I heard that Donald Trump called up Justin Trudeau and was like, hey, condolences. Yeah, the Trumpinator. Everybody's handling this very well. Like, everybody's handling it the way that it should be handled. And that's kind of nice. Yeah. I don't know. I think there's just things about it I can't fathom. You know, I can't fathom making fun of it. I can't fathom, like, 
never seeing someone you care about that much ever again that I mean really when I think about it in my lifetime I have lost a grandmother mm-hmm. and a grandfather mm-hmm. um, then father and mother mm-hmm. that's it and on father's side never met any grandparents ever right never even tracked any down like they weren't there so it's my parents and my parents parents right and that's it I have multiple sisters that are half sisters I have several brothers and there has been times recently where I've thought about hmm I wonder where these people are I see news a 46 year old red deer man killed in a car accident and I have to look and see if it's yeah I, I know you've told me that before I had to look on this roster to make sure one of his kids weren't well, on this no, hockey yeah. team yeah no, I, I hear you. It's alarming. I hear you. It, it strikes too close to home. Mm-hmm. And when something strikes close to home, you should have a right to grieve about it and try to reconcile things that maybe you'd never, ever think about before. Right. You know, it's like anything else. Life requires preparation for things to go smoothly. You got to have preparation. You know, you... Can't expect to like sign up for a soccer team and only show up for games and get better than everybody else who's actually practicing. It's not right. gonna happen. So life requires preparation. So the more of these kind of things you can experience, the better you're able to handle those kinds of things. Yeah. And that's where leaders come from. It's people who've been taught how to handle certain situations. Makes sense. I never really thought of it that way. So, I don't know. I'm interested in seeing how this all plays out worldwide. Because I think it's going to be a big uniter. Yeah, I saw, I saw, like, I think it was the Swedish national hockey team built a memorial for these kids at the Canadian embassy there. That's, that's just awesome. I, I, I don't know. I don't know what to say about that. It's just tugs at my heart I think it's times like this you know I think we're at like I don't even know what number episode this is maybe 85 <laughs> and it's less than 90 it's somewhere between than 80, 80 and 90 more than 80 so I'm thinking 85 but you'll know because you can read you'll it know because on, it'll the be on the description description <laughs> but and I'll know tomorrow but today I don't know Anyway, let's say it's 85. I feel like for 85, 84 episodes and a half, I have been very disappointed in society as a whole. I feel like society as a whole has shown me that they're very, very selfish. They only think about themselves. Now, most people aren't willing to just come right out and say it, but there are those that just come right out and say, no. I don't want to help the homeless people and I don't want to help this person and I don't want to do that. I want it all to be about me. Well, great. You're At least you're honest. So you're saying for once we're giving people as a people kudos for how they're handling Yeah, the because up until this point all I've felt is disappointment in society. Like either they're stupid or they're heartless or they're gutless. There's always something that has disappointed me. And I'm really proud of society for recognizing that, hey, yo, this guy, he didn't do anything wrong. He's just a poor, unfortunate dude who was in the wrong place at the wrong time. Right. That's it. And those kids, same thing. They didn't do anything wrong. There's nothing that they've come up with on their bus driver or any of that stuff. Mm -hmm. 
So that's another one that's clean and doing things. So two people doing things by the rules. And this is what happens when they when they crash. I mean, to me, that's kind of a condemnation of people who think it's okay to just like fudge the rules a little here and fudge the rules a little there. Because here you've got two people who admittedly didn't break any rules and these still 15 people dead. Right. Imagine if one of them, the truck driver, had been drinking. You might have 30 people dead. Yeah. So he might have been going faster or more swervy or something. Right. Who knows? And that's my point. It's like, finally, society... As imperfect as it is, they're has handling come around something and with realize that yes, that wow, this poor dude is hurting because of what happened. He's every, over and over in his head. I guarantee you, he's thinking, "If only." That's it. That those two words will kill a person. Mm -hmm. If only. Yeah. But that's why you can't live life with regrets. Hopefully he can overcome said regrets and yes. actually live. It's the rest too of early. His life, but... It's too early. I'm don't get me wrong. I'm not saying do oh, don't have any regrets. I get it. What I'm saying is Deal with it, it goes with what you taught me once and that your therapist guy taught you. Which <laughs> is the <therapist>. experience <laughs> experience let yourself experience the emotions and the situation. Let yourself understand the situation that you're in. Well, that's like this situation, you know, you don't have to agree, but feel it because that teaches you what, what you're good with and what you're not good with. Yeah. You know, in terms of what you're okay with and what you're not okay with, it teaches you, it sets boundaries for you. But if you don't let it, if you kind of shove it to the side and just kind of go, well, so-and-so says it's okay, so I'm going to agree. It might not be true for you. You got to find out what's true for you. Mm -hmm. We're being invaded by a girl cat. A chubby girl cat. The girl cats always invade during podcast time. She's going to get fermented as soon as we're done she podcasting. She is probably the queen of the zoo. No, she's not. It's still Olive. I don't think so. Olive rules the roost. I don't think so. I do. The tough people took over. Let's be real. I'm the queen of the zoo. <laughs> And I thought you were the empress of the zoo. No, I'm the biggest animal here. That might be true. Biggest female animal here anyway. I don't know. That might be true. You're kind of a gorilla. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> so, <sighs> I guess the moral of the story is... Try to show some compassion for people and think about their situation before you judge them on anything. Like, seriously... Think about people, their situation in life, and try not to judge them. Because you're not them, and they're not you. You've never been in their shoes, and you don't know what they're going through, and you don't know what's going on with them. When you know something, there are people who will tell you, Well, I've lost my so-and-so to a drunk driver, and I've lost this person to a drunk driver. Well, let's face it. Don't we all know people who are closer to their parents than we are and don't we all know people who are not as close to their parents as we are well, of course so what you, you can't just say that because someone lost a parent they understand what you're going through because they might not have felt to the same degree about that parent that you do about the one you lost so there's no way they're going to compare it does that make sense yeah of course so that's why i always say those things about, oh, I know what you're feeling. I lost my girlfriend. Well, that's great. But you know what? This was my mom that I saw every day and talked to if I didn't see her. Blah, 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 blah. That's a lot different than, oh, it's your girlfriend. Yeah, we go out on Friday nights and I sleep at her place on the weekend. Mm. Right. You know? And I'm not saying you're not into that person. I'm just saying it's not the same category. It doesn't even come close. And that's... Something to remember. That have some compassion for these people. I hear you. And I don't think people do have compassion for people. Not most of the time, anyway. I mean, like one guy 
on the community group said made the comment that people they get so butt hurt so fast about opinions oh, and yet man. they realize that they're busy spreading their own opinion that guy I don't even want to talk about that guy but he's right about that maybe well that's what we're talking about Not isn't only it that. I didn't bring up 16 topics yeah, generally speaking, when I talk about a topic, you can expect me to talk about that topic. Nothing else he said in the same conversation was even 1% relevant. That's all I want to point out. Perhaps. But he is right. That situation is the truth. Okay. And he nailed it on that one. So, <laughs> there you go. I personally think that... I would hope that society is going to realize that it's time for a change and actually make that change happen. That's where my hope lies. Well, fair enough. Got anything else to say there, Um, dude? Not at the current moment in time. How about you? I think I'm good. On that note, good night, everyone. Hasta la bye-bye. Hi, everyone. This is Mike, and I truly hope you enjoyed this show. You're able to subscribe to this show on iTunes, Google Play, and Stitcher so as to never miss an episode. If, by chance, you did miss an episode here or there, you can catch up on all shows, past and present, by heading over to Yogi's Podcast Network dot com forward slash TNR show. Thanks for listening.